Live from the Carl Chevrolet Studios in West Des Moines, this is Iowa Live. Welcome back to Iowa Live, and we have a question for you. Do you remember where you were 30 years ago today in Des Moines? Something happened in Des Moines that garnered worldwide attention on this day in history, and to talk all about it is Professor Jeff Stein. Hello, Mr. Stein. How are you? Well, I got to tell you, I'm feeling old, and I think <laughs> that it's been 30 years since the item we're going to talk about today. I, you know, it's, it's amazing. Everybody who was here at that time remembers it like it was yesterday because it was so dramatic. We had to change our lifestyle here in the Des Moines area. What are we talking about? Well, first the rains fell, then the rivers rose, and on the night of July 10th, 1993, 30 years ago, came the word that was really unthinkable to that point. The Des Moines Waterworks plant would soon be shut down, meaning the water supply to Iowa's largest city would simply be turned off. This, of course, due to the flooding that we recall from three decades ago. L.D. McMullen was director of the waterworks at that time. He said shutting the plant down just before the Raccoon River water came over the levee protecting it meant they could get water back to citizens in a matter of weeks. Otherwise, it would have taken months. You may recall the Raccoon crested at a then record 26.75 feet, nearly two feet higher than the levee in existence at the time. Des Moines, therefore, Lou, became the largest city in the U.S. to be without wow. water in modern times. And as you suggested, national and global media were there, and the president even came to Des Moines. Yeah, uh, L.D. McMullen, I think he got the nickname Flood Stud, uh, you know, back then, because he was on TV every single day giving people updates as to what that was. But, you know, he did that. It was a, a brilliant move on their part to, to make sure we got water back to Des Moines as soon as we could. But reclaiming that waterworks plant, that wasn't an easy task at all. No, it was not. First, you had to wait for the water to recede. Right. And then after that, crews spent a full week pumping six feet of water out of the plant itself. 12 days total after the plant was shut down, people could flush their toilets again. Remember, they restored the water for certain purposes in certain zones a bit at a time so it wouldn't overtax the system. Then another week after that, so roughly three weeks from the beginning of it, it was again safe to drink water from your tap, from your faucet. You wow. Know. And you remember there was a, there was a, a little, uh, you know, catchphrase that was used, uh, you know, talking about conserving water. People had to gather water in buckets to flush their toilets. Remember the brown and yellow little ditty that everybody memorized? If it's brown, flush it down. If it's yellow, let it mellow. Uh, so it, one of those things. So uh, one of those, it still sticks to this day. And when it happened in Cedar Rapids years later, they use that same thing. Well, it's the kind of phrase that you hope you never use. Yeah. But it's also the sort of thing that people in radio and TV never thought they'd have to do. Tell people how to flush a toilet. Wow. And what a great feeling was uh, back to normal after such a massive disruption. And some people still have souvenirs from that time, including little metal cans of drinking water. Oh, yeah. That were produced by Anheuser-Busch. They took the bottling plant and canned water instead. So even now, three decades later, those memories, as you've suggested, still strong of the then record flooding that left Des Moines without a water supply. It was on this date, Lou, in 1993, 30 years ago today. I cannot believe it was 30 years ago today. And you know where uh, people were gathering, getting their water from? The tanker trucks were filling up in Altoona because Altoona had the well. So they were supplying everybody with the water. Now, if you want to get more information about what we just talked about, Professor Stein, what can people do? Go to iowaalmanac.com, iowaalmanac.com, or we're on the Twitter machine and Instagram at Iowa Almanac. Okay, I, I still, I'm trying to comprehend. It was 30 years ago today we heard this news, and uh, life as we knew it in Des Moines would change for weeks instead of months thanks to the efforts of the Des Moines Waterworks Plant and L.D. McBone. Thank you so much, Professor Stein. We appreciate it. Good thing we haven't aged a bit in that time. That's true. All right, buddy, take care. We'll talk to you later, and we'll see you tomorrow on Iowa Live.